Are you at 90, 95% capacity? Not you. Why is the industry only at 90, 95%? Because capacity? COVID shook out so much capacity, Steve. You know, we had failures at Thomas Cook, Flybe, Norwegian effectively failed. Alitalia has come back about 50, with only 50% of the fleet. An awful lot of the European airlines had to engage in huge restructuring if they didn't go bust. Uh, well, why wouldn't I just respond to you? Are you keeping capacity low so you can keep raising prices? We're raising this summer, we'll have be 25% more capacity. It's definitely what's good. The legacy is guy. the industry keeping capacity low so yes. they can be. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the most egregious so example of that is Lufthansa in the German market is only operating at about 80% of its pre-COVID capacity. Airfares in the German so market have doubled. The, where are the regulators in Europe uh, uh, getting on their case about that? There's not a lot regulators can do. You know, I mean, the, there is materially less capacity. I mean, the real challenge for us as an industry, I think, but the advantage uh, of the airline industry as an investment for the long only guys is the manufacturers are constrained for the next four or five years. Boeing and Airbus's order book is essentially full to the early 2030s. They can't double production because the supply chains are all challenged, the engine manufacturers, the avionics. Right. They, so there's going to be constrained capacity in Europe, I think, for the next four or five How years. How about you getting workers in order to increase your capacity? Can you no, find them? Yeah. I, you know, we're, we pay high. We, we, we have about 1,000 pilots, about 2,000 cabin crew, per term, continuously going through uh, training. Uh, this year we'll see our labour go from 18,000 people to about 21,000 people uh, because we're the only airline in Europe Wait, to 80, bring growth. 18 to 21, oh, 18. sorry, okay. my apologies, 18 to 21,000. Uh, English is only a second language, Steve. That's right. <laughs> the, I think you said earlier today that you think the industry is going to undergo major consolidation. That's yeah. one thing the regulators could stop and they are stopping here in the United States. Uh, they are, but I mean, uh, the industry is still fractured. In it. Remember, the European industry is financially broken. You know, uh, Alitalia is bankrupt. You know, it, it only survived COVID with a three billion bailout from the Italian, but the 55th bailout of Alitalia by the Italian government. They're going to sell it to Lufthansa before the end of this year. TAP a tiny airline in Portugal, the flag carrier, there's only 10 million people in Portugal. They put 3 billion into TAP to keep it alive, and yet it's emerged out of COVID, only half the size it was pre-COVID. Europe is moving towards the same consolidation the, North, the industry did in North America a decade ago. There will be three large connecting carriers, Lufthansa, Air France, KLM, BA, and the one good guy, which would be the Irish Ryanair. <laughs> Um, the other issue that a lot of people are facing, the industry itself is facing, is higher fuel costs. Yep. You benefited this most recent quarter from hedges that went your way, that, that sure. were dead on. Uh, you expect that prices will go up from here? Where, how do you handle it? What kind of hedges do you have for the future? Yeah, we're hedged. We're kind of 80% hedged out for the next 12 months to March 24. A, bit, a little bit higher than last year. Last year we hedged at about $65 a barrel. This year we're hedged at about $88 a barrel. So our oil bill is going up by about a billion euros in the next 12 months. But You're hedged at oil above the price it's trading right now. Uh, we are. Uh, sometimes, you get it, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. But ultimately, we hedge so that we have cost certainty for the next fiscal cycle, for the next 12 months. But the higher fares in Europe, and our fares are lagging behind most of our competitors in terms of increases, uh, will pay for that increased oil, which is why this morning we expect to grow traffic 10% to the next 12 months to about 185 million passengers. We're modestly expecting profitability will kind of follow that and increase what, about 10% in profitability. I know we got to go. What do those um, more efficient Boeing planes mean for the bottom line? They are transformational. The new Boeing MAX 10 aircraft means we can carry 20% more passengers per aircraft but burn 20% less fuel. It's a 33% reduction in fuel But it's only, it's only going to be a small part of the mix of the total number. We will have a fleet of about 800 aircraft in the next, uh, over the next decade. About 60% uh, of that fleet will be the MAX aircraft, which are With transformational. The, I mean, the engine technology, and people give out about the airline industry and our impact on the environment. What we're doing and what the industry is doing in terms of technology transformation, the engines are so much more uh, efficient. Now, I do it because I'm an accountant. I want fuel as my bottom line. I want to do it because I reduce fuel. But we have an enormous environmental upside as well that we're going to carry millions of passengers across Europe, uh, but at only about 50% of the emissions that people are creating when they travel with the old high fare failed legacy airlines. <laughs> Speaking of, how did you fly here? Because you complained when you sat down I about the high transit. I absolutely stiffed. I flew United out of Lisbon yesterday. I'd paid $5,000 one way. And people criticize, yeah, people condemn Ryanair fares, which are about 40 well, You don't bucks. come to New York, though, with Ryanair. You can't. Can't do it, you know. I, well, because we've got 737s and there's too much growth opportunities in Europe. Somebody else can do the transatlantic. But looking at transatlantic airfares this summer, somebody needs to, 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 to shake up that transatlantic industry.